Hi all and welcome to the Truth, Honour and Integrity Show. My name's Thomas Williams and uh, we've got a bit of a show for you tonight. Some uh, completely um, new information. Some fairly, I will warn, fairly heavy information. Uh, but it needs to be addressed. And uh, we have some intel. Uh, some of it which will be a continuation of the previous intel and some of it completely new so with it, uh, we've got a show tonight and it will all be mixed in with uh, news and views from around the world and uh, some interesting op-ed pieces that will have you <laughs> pondering uh, long into the night and uh, the usual uh, questions and answers, where I have to repeat certain questions and answers over and over again. No, only joking. Uh, we've had some new questions this week, so it should be uh, good fun. Right, let's get into the details of the show. And uh, if you want to listen live, as most do, is um, and the figures for the live listens have gone up 50% in the last rapidly. And that's good. And uh, the link for the live show is www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash 895-5881. And uh, you can also listen live on what is known as the articles website called thinkdifferent.thepeoplesclub.org. That has the archives of all the shows, including uh, the must-listen-to ones, which we've uh, kind of been referencing a lot as we have a lot of new listeners to the show. And some people are kind of unfamiliar as to uh, what this show is all about. Uh, well, if you do the, the archive of the biggest shows, must-listen-to shows in, uh, in order you will get the full essence of what this show and what this group's all about. Uh, we have the Facebook page, Truth, Honour and Integrity, and the MeWe um, social media alternative, um, which people have had difficulty uh, finding. Um, I've no idea why, but if you uh, can't want to join MeWe and can't locate Truth, Honour and Integrity on it, Send an email uh, to this address, and you, uh, this is the email address for the show. For if you want to ask questions or make comments and uh, proposals and whatnot, and the email is truth dot honor dot and dot integrity at gmail dot com. And remember, honor is spelt the American way without the U. We also have the People's Club donations website link and all about the foundation at the peoplesclub.org right let's get into some news items there's not as many uh today because i've kind of got it into more op-ed pieces this week but um president trump administration said last thursday it would no longer presume that many pregnant women detained by immigration authorities uh, should be released from custody and now this is a reversal of an Obama era directive you'll understand why that that is uh, after this show you'll understand a, a whole heap more why US Immigration and Customs Enforcement Officers better known as ICE will make a case-by-case -case determination under the new policy. Women in their third trimester will still be released as before, said Philip Miller, an ICE Deputy Executive Director. Just like there are men who commit heinous acts of violence, so too we have had women in custody that commit heinous acts also. And the Republican president has vowed to crack down on illegal immigration, including policies which deportees can remain free during pending cases. However, the Democrats and advocacy groups have criticised the administration for separating migrants from their children when they're being detained. Um, 
But during uh, Mr. Obama's administration, ICE in 2016 announced that pregnant women not subject to mandatory detention should be presumptively released. But Miller said on Thursday the new directive was meant to align with a Trump executive order mandating tougher ICE enforcement. 35 pregnant women are in ICE custody currently, all subject subject to mandatory detention Uh, and since the policy was implemented in December Miller said 506 pregnant women have been detained by ICE. He could not say what happened to each of them but noted that some likely have been deported while others might have been released into the United States. We'll have more on that um, in the second hour. The recently fired FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe this week um, set up a GoFundMe fundraiser to cover the the cost of his legal bills in lieu of being fired. And uh, Mr McCabe managed to raise six figures within a few hours last Thursday exceeding expectations and prompting the organisers to increase the goal of the campaign funds from 150000 to 250000 Really? Like they don't uh, earn enough, those people. Now, as of uh, last Thursday, the fund had raised more than $200,000. I wonder which foundation paid into that. I think you all know. Now, Mr. McCabe, as you all know, was fired from the FBI uh, two days before his retirement by the Attorney General Jeff Sessions, which was at the recommendation of FBI officials. And an, an upcoming Department of Justice Inspector General report is expected to be rather critical of Mr. McCabe. Now, Mr. Trump, of course, had... Um, had said <laughs> quite a bit, as he often does, and a long, had long blasted Mr. McCabe publicly, which was largely for his wife's acceptance of donations from a Hillary Clinton ally when Jill McCabe ran for state office in Virginia. All very in-house. Remember last week when I said, beware the female partners. It will become more prevalent, that statement, as time goes forward. Um, Now, shortly before Mr McCabe's firing, Mr Trump scoffed at the possibility that McCabe might retire with full benefits. He didn't. Um, McCabe, who called his firing part of Mr Trump's war on the FBI, authored an op-ed piece in the Washington Post last week, which is owned by Mr. Bezos of Amazon. Go figure. Describing his firing, he said he found out he was fired when a friend called him and told him he was on the TV. Ah, well, that's what happens when you play games. Oh, I should have put these two. Um, Yeah, let's... Put that story further down. President Trump uh, this week has continued to lash out at Amazon and accusing the retail giant of scamming the US Postal Service over shipping costs and evading taxes. Now, I don't know whether people remember a show um, Drake had a guy on called David Wynn Miller. Um, some of it seemed good and a lot of it was interesting whether it was all valid remains to be seen but uh, he mentioned about the US Postal Service being the money it was them that drove uh, the money for America the US Postal Service I can't remember all the details but um, maybe this is uh, another indication that certain things are changing and going back to the way they should be. So uh, Trump lashed out at Amazon over the shipping costs. And um, 
he said, quote, unquote, or inverted commas. <laughs> While we are on the subject, it is reported that the U.S. Post Office will lose $1.50 on average for each package it delivers for Amazon. Really. Trump tweeted following up on a tweet earlier this week that he accused Amazon of putting many thousands of retailers out of business. And that amounts to billions of dollars, he said. The failing New York Times reports that the size of the company's lobbying staff had ballooned and that does not include the fake Washington Post, which is used as a lobbyist and should so register. And if the post office increased its parcel rates, Amazon's shipping costs would rise by 2.6 billion. Uh, Trump said, and this post office scam must stop and Amazon must pay real costs and taxes now here, here. Where are we next? I'm going to leave that for a minute. Uh, there was an issue, another issue, yet again, uh, Israeli stormtroopers um, causing death and destruction and appearing to uh, not face the consequences from international law and uh, there were large crowds of flag waving Palestinian protesters marched towards the Gaza, Gaza border fence last Friday and some of them were throwing stones which is not advisable when they have tanks and missiles and helicopters and all kinds of other stuff and that started the Israelis firing that officials had said that he killed at least five people, which uh, actually went up to 17, if memory serves me correctly. And the Palestinian Health Ministry said that at least 500 Palestinians were hurt by live fire. Uh, Rubber-coated steel pellets or tear gas fired by Israeli forces at several locations along the fence. And in a separate incident, a Palestinian farmer was killed by an Israeli tank shell. Really? While he was working in his field before dawn. The process has begun as mass sit-ins organised by Gaza's Hamas rulers, but quickly spun out of control, and the Israeli military said thousands of Palestinians rolled burning tyres and threw stones of forces stationed on the border and that troops opened fire at the main instigators. Yeah. So the main instigators were uh, over 500 people, and uh, you have to um, hit farmers with tanks, really, on his own farm. Palestinian witnesses said hundreds of Palestinian, uh, Palestinians participated in clashes, while thousands more gathered in tent encampment set up at five sites uh, at a distance of several hundred metres from the border. Such mass gatherings near the border, uh, as I said, is signalling a new tactic by Hamas and one that might prove more challenging to Israel's military than previous smaller protests. That won't be the last of uh, Israel and those people uh, tonight. Let's uh, get them all out of the way. Um, Israel, uh, as announced last week, uh, there'll be an, a UN agreement about migrants. Uh, this really needs to be looked at and will see be seen in a different light following the, the peace in the second hour. Um, and Israel, as their... Um, as they commonly do, uh, have done an about-face and cancelled the plans now to deport migrants en masse to Africa after reaching a deal previously with the United Nations Refugee Agency. More than 16,000 asylum seekers will instead be resettled in unspecified Western countries. I think we know what those countries are. And the rest, about 18,000, 
according to the Israeli media, will be given permanent residency in Israel. Israel's Supreme Court had blocked deportations meant to begin on Sunday and the plan to send the migrants to African countries, which was reported to be Uganda and Rwanda. Really, that's really helpful, <laughs> mass famine and death. Just send them all back there. Like a death sentence. Unbelievable. But uh, this plan was condemned by Israeli activists and sparked protests. You people often um, tar Israeli people all under the same brush and the same sweep. It's not the case. There's a lot of uh, Jews who are campaigning against this government and the tyrannous military IDF. They're, they're tired of what's going on. And uh, it's never reported on the Clinton News Network or any uh, any other American news network about the work the Jews do campaigning against this type of uh, Zionist control. So a new plan is going to be implemented over a five-year period. And then 24 hours later, Nutty did another 180 and went against the UN deal and formulating a new Zionist plan for the migrants. Go figure. And in the light of all what's gone on, Turkish president this week, Mr Erdogan, called his Israeli counterpart Benjamin Netanyahu, or nutty asshole, as I like to call him, a terrorist on Sunday. Um, I couldn't agree more. Escalating an exchange of insults that started after he criticised Israel's lethal military response to a demonstration on the Gazan border. Israel has defended the killing of 15 Palestinians during Friday's demonstration and Netanyahu tweeted that the Israeli army will not be lectured by those who have indiscriminately bombed civilian populations for years. Really. Uh, in re that was in reference to Turkey. It seems to forget that uh, Israel's bombed pretty much everyone in the Middle East for the last uh, 60 years. Certainly fi uh, 50 anyway, since 1967. Uh, Mr Erdogan says, We don't have the shame of invading on us, Netanyahu. You are an invader, and right now are present in those lands as an invader. At the same time, you are a terrorist and in another speech he said, you are a terrorist state. It is known what you have done in Gaza and also what you have done in Jerusalem. You have no one that likes you in the world. Uh, apart from a few uh, APAC representatives, uh, American politicians. Uh, <laughs> dual passport people. Uh, in a later tweet, Mr Netanyahu, who said Erdogan is not accustomed to being answered back to, but he should start getting used to it. He, who occupies northern Cyprus, encroaches on Kurdish territory and massacres civilians in Afran, cannot preach to us on values and morals. And the Israeli defence minister has rejected calls for a, an inquiry into Friday's events. So they just carry on. Willy nilly. Well, so it seems anyway. Right, that's the end of the uh, Israel stuff. Um, where are we next? Ted Nugent has now got involved. And uh, he made some interesting observations in my uh, point of view. We've had uh, recent pieces on synths and whatnot. And uh, Mr. Nugent lashed out on Friday at the high school students who have led protests against gun violence in recent weeks, 
calling them soulless and ignorant. He said, I feel really sorry for them because it's not only ignorant and dangerously stupid, but it's soulless. To attack the good law-abiding families of America when well-known predictable murderers commit these horrors is deep in the category of soulless. These poor children, I'm afraid to say this, and it hurts me to say this, but the evidence is irrefutable. They have no soul. In the interview, Nugent railed against what he called the dumbing down of America by schools and teachers, uh, whom he accused of teaching students lies. Go figure. The man knows what he's talking about, in my opinion. Um... The dumbing down of America is manifested in the culture deprivation of our academia that have taught these kids the lies. The media have prodded and encouraged and provided these kids lies. And that is how we end up with David Hogg's. Here, here, Mr. Nugent. Perhaps I should have played one of his songs this week, maybe next week. Parkland alleged shooting survivor, although uh, he's changed his story at least twice, uh, perhaps even more since, uh, David Hogg. Now, he was, how can he be survivor when he was three miles away and rode in with his bike with his camera? Thomas, you shouldn't let facts get in the way. <laughs> well, someone has to. But he doubled down on his criticism this week of Fox News host Laura Ingraham as advertisers continued to flee from her show of a comment she made. In the past few days, more than a dozen companies have pulled their advertisements from the Ingraham angle in response to her tweet mocking Hogg for being rejected from colleges. Um... Hogg went on to say, a bully is a bully and it's important you stand up to them. And he said on CNN, that it is disturbing that Ingraham has not been held accountable for her past comments. Uh, and neither are you, Mr. Hogg. It's really sad and disturbing to know that somebody can bully so many people and just get away with it. What is even more disturbing, Mr. Hogg, is you can lie to so many people and get away with it as well. You are not a survivor. You are a bystander and an actor. Okay. We're coming for you, lad, and the rest of you fake actors with your agendas. We're not tolerating it anymore. So, uh, people of the alternative community need to go and support Laura Ingraham. Let, let her know that we agree. And let the advertiser people know we're not going to tolerate that type of boycotts. People are, are supposed to have a freedom of speech. We're not Nazi Germany yet. Here's another one. Mark uh, Zuckerberg with an F explains uh, Facebook's new system of favouring broadly trusted news sources. Really? <laughs> Is there any? <laughs> broadly trusted. Oh dear. Via a mechanism algorithm designed to favour established outlets and crush new media. Really, Mr. Fuckerberg, we're going to have our day with you as well. And that won't be far uh, too far off. Facebook and you, uh, introduced its new system in January and the results were immediately apparent. Facebook traffic to established Outlets including Clinton News Network and NBC soared upwards, and the real figures are soaring down, 
while traffic to conservative outlets fell. Facebook engagement, likes, shares and comments also fell across multiple new media outlets, including those on the right and the left. Is that the right and left of the page or <laughs> those stupid uh, political boxes they create for you? Uh, Facebook engagement on President Trump's posts fell by 45%. See how they can interfere, how they can change where people go or lead them onto a certain path. Most people uh, don't believe it's possible to tell you in the mainstream how they can manipulate it in such a way that the, the Trump's posts lost 45%. Nearly half of them. Now, Mr. Zuckerberg explained these changes, talking about providing a more meaningful experience for Facebook users. Uh, I don't think so. But despite tamely couching his words, the truth slipped out. Facebook, uh, he said, is going to act like a publisher with a view on what counts as quality news. and make judgments about the accuracy and reliability of news publications. Well, perhaps they should judge themselves and shut themselves down then. Got to be fair, haven't you? And uh, he went on and outlined three categories of fake news. Spammers, state actors... <laughs> Bye, Mr. Hogg. <laughs> perhaps not. And real media outlets who are saying what they think is true but have varying levels of accuracy or trustworthiness. Really? CNN don't, e don't even bother trying. Let's have a live broadcast from Baghdad from a Californian car park and two people standing on either side of a car. <laughs> oh. The other guy, what was his, what's his name with the white that looks like an albino? Um, with the green screen over Sandy Hook. Right in your face. Um, so, kind of, uh, you got to ask, why are they doing all this? Well, it's control. But well, here's uh, a poll that was done recently and it tells you the real reasons why and this is good news a survey by the Monmouth University Polling Institute found that the vast majority of Americans believe that mainstream media outlets report fake news a whopping 77% of over 800 respondents relayed their distrust for major news organisations in both television and print. Now this is a marked increase from the 63% that was already sceptical a year ago. So it's gone up 14% in one year. Of those, 31% believe it to be a regular occurrence, while 46% see it as a more occasional issue of fake news. 83% of those questions believe that special interest groups intentionally seek to implant the mainstream news cycle with false information. 83% believe that. The interest in um, who they believe is the special interest group. Langley, Deep State. More so, 87% believe that those same forces influence social media, such as Facebook, as well as YouTube. And suspicion is not divided along party lines, although differences still exist, while Republicans are most convinced of the media's impure intentions, with a pervasive 89% distrusting mainstream media, 
Democrats are now up to 61% and in agreement. Democrats last year was only 43%. That's a big jump, 18% in a year of the Democrats now believing that the mainstream media is talking total BS. Those not affiliated with either party maintain a healthy scepticism of their own. Last year, 66% of independent voters already distrusted the media, and this year it has risen to 82%. Fairly hefty, that. That most people have um, no trust in the mainstream media. So you're talking uh, between 60 and 80 percent across all groups, all political parties. That's why Facebook needs to then, because of that mistrust, they're trying to channel you into going to their selected sites. How, how about we not? I have a feeling Facebook may well close down in the near future. I can't see Mr Zuckerberg surviving, being honest. Uh Attorney General Jeff Sessions made a decision this week to bring in U.S. Attorney John Huber. Now, most people will not be familiar with that name. You may want to get used to that name, because it may become rather interesting. Uh, as this move has the ability to combine all the powers of the U.S. Department of Justice's Inspector General with a prosecutor who can bring charges. Think about that. He can seek indictments and get results for President Trump far more quickly than a second special counsel can do. Why? Because of this reason, that point is critical because as Sessions' March 29th letter explains, the Inspector General's jurisdiction to conduct civil and criminal investigations includes taken action, actions taken by former employees after they have left government service. Then Hoover can act on any of those matters. Big change. And this is the key part. Perhaps Mr. Jura, uh, John Durash should take note of this. As a U.S. attorney, John Huber has the full authority to empanel a grand jury and to file criminal charges. A grand jury can be empanelled anywhere, which means it, that it could be a group of citizens from Utah instead of the D.C. swamp that decides whether to hand down indictments for felony prosecution. So now you know why Mr. Huber was employed. The Inspector General's jurisdiction extends not only to allegations of legal violations, but also to allegations that department employees violated established practices as well. Mr. Sessions added in his letter, which means that the IG report, Inspector General report, can hold people accountable even for actions that do not violate a specific statute. And it is believed that Huber has over 450 investigators available to him before his appointment. Watch that space closely. A uh, short piece. Um, we've got uh, a lot of issues to do with children. You're going to hear more 
in the second hour. But there was three um, news items this week that highlight the failure of not only America with its children, but Britain also. In a far-reaching report done by teachers in the UK was stating that children were filling their pockets <coughs> with food from the school's canteen due to malnourishment. So kids are stealing, the f- well I don't call that stealing, I call that survival, are forced to take food and load it into their pockets due to malnourishment. They're reporting the staggering rise in children that have a grey pallor, which is a, an indication of malnourishment. That's in the UK. Teachers in Oklahoma, uh, of course there's demonstrations going on in Oklahoma and Kansas, stating that they only have 29 books available for 87 pupils. Like I said, they're not teaching nothing. It's not always the teacher's fault, largely it's not. They didn't set the curriculum. But something has to be done urgently about what's going on in our schools. You know, the advertisements here in Florida, and I don't know what it's like in the other states, but the uh, lottery states, it's given X number of billions to schools. Where did that all go? Because clearly it's not going into the schools. And then you look at your uh, property taxes, and again, it may be different in other states, but the vast amount of... Um, the most overriding item of property ta- property taxes is for schools. Again, I've got to ask, where is it going? Because clearly it's not going into schools. It's not going onto books. It's certainly not going into teachers' pockets either. A Kansas teacher this week showed his paycheck and net pay for the whole month of $1,049 per month. That's what the teachers in Kansas and Oklahoma are complaining about. Yes, again, another program. We're putting this amount into schools and that amount into schools. And yet there's absolutely zero evidence supporting that fact. So in other words, it's a conspiracy. And the point is, where is that conspiracy going and where is that money going? Because clearly it's not going into schools. Right, final news item before we get into the intel and uh, the op-ed pieces. Uh, Anne, uh, Hillary Clinton whoever it may be, chimed in last night at the US is, wait for it, don't laugh too loud, witnessing an all-out attack on core values of democracy, she said. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and this appeared to be the latest in a series of criticisms of the Trump administration. She lamented, uh, whilst tripping down the stairs, we're seeing a retreat from the commitment to embrace women's advancement as an objective of US foreign policy. I think it's very unfortunate to contemplate what more can happen that would put our rights at risk, our freedom at risk, our values, our fundamental views about what it means to be Americans, she said. I have three points uh, regarding that statement. An all-out attack, really, 
What about the values of democracies for the well over 100 people that you and your husband have had killed to silence them? Or how about the democratic rights of the manor world holding trustee, which you have threatened and sent people to delete her? How about her rights? Point two, embrace women's advancement. Here we go again with the male-female divide card that they tried to wheel out last year and didn't work. But let's look at the female role models, shall we? You, Ms Clinton. Condoleezza Rice. Susan Rice. Jarrett. Feinstein. Lynch. Thatcher. May and Merkel. What have they done to advance things, all things female? Are they, re are they really the role models? Because to me, those collections have done far from enhancing the female model, role or otherwise, and took on the worst traits of males so please spare us with your female advancement bullshittery. We've had enough of it, Clinton. Part three. Our rights, values and freedoms and fundamental views to be an American. <laughs> really, Anne. Our rights were stripped away a long time ago with your help. Values shredded by synth-style programming. And as for our freedoms, uh, I think we have a slightly, well not slightly, a vastly different meaning for the term freedom. Because your meaning is spreading hate, war, death, destruction and resource grabbing across the world. That's not our version of freedom and. So please shut up before your circuits overload again and... Mind the stairs. Hi all and welcome back to the second hour. Right, let's get into the meat of the show. And uh, there's plenty of it. Well, <laughs> perhaps that was an inappropriate term for one of the pieces anyway. Uh, let's have a few gulps and a few lights are clicking and we'll get into it. <laughs> Ooh. Intel, not that much, but um, new stuff in a way, and a bit of uh, old. Um, as announced last week, uh, in reference to the Citibank Group, that is uh, being broken up and uh, will be parceled back to the former USSR countries including the assets that were stolen from them, largely by that particular group. Now, given its size, it will take a little while longer for that to all come uh, be dealt with, processed and delivered and come to fruition. But work has been ongoing this week. Wells Fargo is uh, underway and it's existing. It is now expected to take 60 to 90 days to complete the process of transfer to a nationalised bank. Uh, there's a lot of things going on over Wells Fargo. A lot of um, criminal investigations. That's, people think, well, that can just be done in a day or this. But there's a lot of um, investigative work ongoing currently, which is why things are appearing to be quiet. On many levels. The wall. Which is under now underway. It has started. And it's also under heavy guard. And on uh, extreme watch. Right now. And the reasons why. Will become clear. In an op-ed piece shortly. Now. Here's the new pieces. There's an ongoing issue currently to do with time slips and time jumps. 
Now these, which I have noticed also and have reported to higher people, um, that they have been occurring with increasing frequency recently. And the reason being is the clowns are messing with time to try and go back in time and reclaim the covenant again. This is what's been going on. So that's the uh, the long term agreement that was recently nullified and returned to the people. So they're not in control anymore. It hasn't worked. And it will not work. None of their bigger plans work anymore. I've been telling them that for the last three years on the, on this show, uh, but they don't appear to listen. Um, but what it has done, it's created distortions in what we perceive as time. They will pass. Now, this is an official warning to the clowns. What you're doing and the participants, lower minions, what you're doing is going against natural law and punishments now are fairly steep. These times, these current times, not the ones you try to go back to, are not like the past where you did whatever you wished with zero consequences. Those days are over, period. We will not warn you again, we will just act. And for those who have done the incursions, we will hunt you down. And you will face the consequences. The SSP, or SS small p, as it should be known, SS being prevalent for those who are new members. Your secret space program is Nazis, SS, small p. They are still trying to gain access to the on-world portals that are scattered about the planet in selective mountains. I'm not going to give any more details as it's an ongoing operation. And the reason they're doing it is a desire to fix or obtain more tech. So they can change the course of the way things are going now. Message to them also. You won't. Now the underground beings, most of which are not human, are still holding firm. And blocking them gaining access. It is expected at this time that they will hold that stance as they are excited by the fact that they also are close to freedom as well. So they're pushing as well. So in essence, it's uh, not too dissimilar to what Cobra described uh, years, about, years ago about the compression, the push up and the push down. In essence, what's happening on the surface is we're rolling them out in steam roller fashion. Nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Oops. So that's the Intel news for this week. Uh, it is rather short because uh, too many things are uh, very delicate at the moment and we are in the end times. How long those end times will take remains to be seen. But like I said, there's a lot of investigative work ongoing at the moment where they're digging deeper and deeper and deeper. And the deeper you go, the worse it gets. So in a, in a news item this week, um, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, was, has been admitted into hospital, allegedly for planned surgery on his hip. 
um, personally, I would do a um, surgery on his head or preferably around the neck, which is how you get rid of those type of people. Um, and the surgery will take place on Wednesday at King Edward's the se- 7th Hospital in Marylebone. And Prince Philip, who is 96, yeah, because he took the Kool-Aid, retired from royal duties last August. Um, I didn't know he started any. <laughs> um, he did not attend the Easter service at Windsor Castle on Sunday, and his absence is said to have been because of a hip problem. Um, well, perhaps Philip could do um, the British NHS a favour and um, share costs, share beds. Perhaps he should hop into bed with a uh, nutty arsehole, um, given he's just been into hospital. And the question for the day is, is going into hospital a new term for something else? I'm not saying any more. Um, yet again, uh, recently, we've had more shootings this week. And perhaps, uh, perhaps the authorities, quote unquote, should notice that all the shootings are lone gunmen. Perhaps if we had more people with guns allowed alongside these lone gunmen, maybe so many more wouldn't get killed. But rather than take guns away, perhaps we should give everyone within reason. Um, and what I'm doing now is slightly more lighter before we get into the heavy piece, so bear with me. Venezuela. I was speaking to a Venezuelan national this week. And she was telling me uh, the conditions of her family. She would like to go back to the country. That's her home, she says. But she kind of has no option but to stay here. Because there's nothing left in Venezuela at all. So she explained conditions. Um, people will remember me mentioning, I think it was last week or the show before, about um, Western perspectives of what is um, considered struggling in comparison to other people around the world. And I said, made the statement, um, many of us live like kings in comparison. That's not to say there's not a lot of people struggling, but I've highlighted it many times in this show. One in six children below the poverty line in America alone. But then she told me how much the Venezuelan people are being given per month. And perhaps your perspective may change. Two dollars 75 cents per month and it costs seven dollars to buy a chicken three months money the people and particularly the elderly have resorted to eating out of the trash can There's no medicine, there's no food, and no money. Where's the international outcry? This has to stop. Of course, the trust did try to send money last year, and it was blocked. It's time we blocked them people. Once and for all. Two dollars seventy five cents a month. People can send money to the banks, but the banks are not allowing any money out. They're giving them an allowance. You have to queue up four hours. People remember the piece I did about uh, two months ago. 
where a guy who went to Venezuela as a journalist uh, queued up at four different banks for eight hours and was allowed to take out something like six dollars or four to six dollars after queuing eight hours to remove money from his own account. Heartbreaking. So I've spoken to this woman and I said perhaps um, we can send some money, won't be a lot, but some money out of the foundation. So I'll be seeking approval from the other directors um, and maybe that's something we can do. Um, They ask not for money, but for um, goods, be um, particularly uh, medicines, there is none. Or perhaps we can uh, go and buy them, and then she can transfer them over to the one of the villages that will um, be beneficial. Not good. Now. <clears throat> You may start hearing about these people, or this particular woman. I can't remember the guy's name, but it was mentioned in one of the QAnon posts. Uh, Jared Cohen. Not to be mixed up with Jared Kushner, although similar. But he has a partner called Jasmine Green, who grew up in the UK. And she works for a group called Jigsaw at Alphabet, which is um, a department of Google. And she was tasked with um, internet cleanup, as uh, she calls it. And the topic of discussion that she was bringing up is what's the most important lesson we learned about ISIS's ability to leverage the internet for recruitment. And so Google and this particular team, Jigsaw at Alphabet, were sent over uh, to the relevant countries where ISIS were operating. Sounds like spies to me, but nevertheless. And she she did this piece in a journal, and it stated ISIS pretty much masters any media from radio to leafleting. When it comes to the internet, they've really understood the power of micro-targeting. They create content in a long list of languages, including Arabic and English, but it goes on and on and even gets to Chinese and Hebrew. She went on further, said the language that really blew my mind to see in a video was sign language was being used also. So they are creating very local recruiting materials and using the algorithms that are available through social media to distribute this material and reach people in all corners of the world, according to her. Let's just break that down. So, in a war-ravaged Middle East, what she is saying is ISIS are able to do all that, speak Chinese, Hebrew, Arabic, English, and use algorithms, all from underground bunkers and caves and other concealed locations with ju- with mobile phones and Wi-Fi. <laughs> really? What's the first thing any military does when it goes into a country. It bombs the communication networks. According to this this woman, they're using all kinds of algorithms. 
and they are operating inside countries as ISIS are operating inside countries that have limited access as well but they can still do all that Uh, my message to Yasmin Green is the key is in the name of your group, Jigsaw at Alphabet, as in three-letter alphabets. It is they, instead of these visiting, instead of visiting these countries under the banner of so-called internet freedom. Or are you actually going as an agent? Look more closely to home as who has all of those capabilities because it certainly isn't some ragbag militia in the Middle East. ISIS talking Chinese and Hebrew. I don't know. I've heard such rubbish in all my life. Right. Here we go. The wall and why. The wall is to prevent free movement of tens of thousands and possibly hundreds of thousands of humans coming from South America, from regions that are riddled with, uh, riddled with poverty, drug laden, and war zones being transported into private holdings which is a polite term for concentration camps these are ran by the bush cartel who also operate and control the texas rangers groups so what is the purpose and reasons for the wall well the purpose is to prevent mercenaries acronym led groups created by our own agencies drug gangs gangs intent on and that live for violence which are later used to do the dirty work of others in a plea bargain the sex trade and trafficking child trafficking child porn industry human slavery selling and the worst aspects of this is people are being used for snuff movies, dissecting them live or otherwise for organ harvesting, which are then sold to the hospitals for between ninety and $225,000, depending on which organ. Extracting children's adrenal glands for the Kool-Aid juice, the elite drink that helps life longevity. And you think that that is bad enough? The worst thing, depending on your perspective, is that some humans are being used for food. Let that sink in. The wall will go down deep enough to encounter any tunnels or night crawlers underneath. The wall will be deeper than it is higher. Visible higher. It's expected to cost roughly 35 billion in total. So what has been coming in? Remember all the trains last year? Our caravans of death. The latest one Trump alluded to contained 1,000 people to be used in various forms. Hezbollah and other mercenary Arabs funneled into Venezuela at the behest of Barack Obama Hello Mr Obama We're coming for you Tick tock 
we have all the proof. And on to these caravans, eerily reminiscent of the war refugees, be it Jewish and others, going into Auschwitz. Now this piece will bring up many emotions, and it should do. But don't feel guilty for not knowing this stuff. This has been well hidden for a long, long time. Um, we have done more than our fair share of sin eating to take on that as well. To most people, and even some in our own community, these facts are unbelievable. But there is new knowledge that has now come to light that has been barely believable previously, only to find out later on that most of it was real or true. A bit like MK Ultra, which curiously. Um, the Sci-Fi Channel is running an exposure on April the 8th of MKUltra. CIA getting hit again on the mainstream media. Oops. I think most are familiar now with the first aspects of trafficking, slavery and even child porn and the depths of it. It's been a hard pill to swallow for all of us. That so much of it can go on in society and yet so few were aware of the staggering scale of these operations. The set and the stage for these type of operations are simple in its scope and delivery. Create a war or create a famine or create a disaster, false flag or otherwise. These three modes then pulls in all the other players like the United Nations, World Health Organization and the misnomer group known as Charities. plus certain foundations, <coughs> Clintons, to provide additional support to begin their operations. Those three modes create mass confusion and people are traumatized by whichever event they've just witnessed. And those people are largely not in good thinking mode. Confusion reigns and then they are hoarded on what they think is the safety, or hoarded into regions where the prey awaits. Military have been involved, you've seen it all with uh, Haiti. And they are escorted away via boats, planes, or other modes and this is why we have seen the increase in migration globally. It's the same game playing out. And amongst all the confusion for people and families to get lost, except many are not lost at all, but deliberately herded into separation modes. It involves all aspects of the so-called upper echelon of society, known as institutions. To older folk, the term institution was meant more along the lines of a mental facility. Kind of ironic, really, as those who created it are the very people who belong in them, in my opinion.
But this whole operation of secrecy is imbued throughout our society and largely unwittingly by people who have no idea this exists. Never mind, they are participating in a nefarious program. By now, most people are kind of familiar of the role of the misnomer called intelligence agencies. It's less about intelligence and more about the subversion of the human race. And also governments' roles in these levels of criminality. But they can't do it without the systems and the institutions of society to play their roles as well. So what are these institutions that are involved? Military. The police. Judges. Lawyers. Teachers. Social workers. Doctors. And nurses. All the professions that are supposed to operate for everyone's benefit... And yet all those eight professions are all part of that system that creates the problem and feeds the need to take what is a fairly radical action and build a wall. Those eight professions play a role in the children. And the usage of the children in various ways. Most are completely oblivious to it. But people need to know these are the eight professions that are involved in it all. The social workers in the UK have highlighted before are being paid £20,000, $28,000 to remove children from the homes where they go into uh, false courts that doesn't allow the parents or a lawyer representation and they foster the child out. Foster is a very loose term for um, sex slavery, child porn and other incidents, ritual. It was reported last week or the week before that around 45% of foster parents in California were pedos. Do you think the system didn't know that? So when people maybe complain, that's being unfair on the military, that's being unfair on the police, the judges, the lawyers, the teachers, the social workers, the doctors and the nurses. No, it's not. Am I saying all of them are involved? Absolutely not. But these are the vehicles that are driving this trade. Very institutions that we rely on what is supposed to be a civilised society. But the two items that most people struggle with and that's the fairly new evidence is the first one being the Kool-Aid what's been deemed as Kool-Aid extraction where children are put into extreme states of fear via torture and or total terror events which causes the child to produce excess adrenaline. Once in this excited, tortuous, fear-laden state, the secretion is then extracted from the children via the neck and the spinal column through a needle. and into what's known as adrenochrome. 
adrenochrome is more potent if it comes from a child rather than an adult pure life force energy it can also be used as a psychic psychedelic drug and has been known to have been used during the mk ultra experiments in relation to mind control but it also been developed in a way the methods of which i'm not familiar with currently into a potion that enhances life longevity for obvious examples look at some of the actors and actresses the politicians who never appear to age there was a video posted yesterday or this morning of bill clinton the last time i saw him he was crippled and at death's door and suddenly is a picture of health again does that happen normally no they've tortured one or more children to achieve that look and the reality is you're going to have to accept that most if not all the so-called famous people have participated in some or all portions of this be it the Kool-Aid be it the child sexual behavior be it rituals be it sacrifice or the consuming of the child like I've said previously selling the soul is a literal term not a figurative term all for fame and wealth and illusion and let's say bollocks to morals these are the people that you're idolizing all the famous ones they're not famous in my book now the second topic that people have no doubt will be struggling with is the news that we are not the top of the food chain yes we may get chomped on by a gator or a lion or some other beast like from the animal kingdom but there is rogue E.T. elements who think of us as a stable diet now I'd be rather careful of your own words when you're using the term harvest law of one and all that bs that's what it's about the law of one harvesting humans like they did to the mines like they did to the aztecs and all the other tribal people who just suddenly vanished into thin air but harvesting is a more familiar to be used in terms of agriculture but remember the same beings who taught us agriculture which was designed to fatten us up had other intentions for harvesting us now that is bad enough but the thoughts of it being fellow humans consuming the people I think most find the most abhorrent and leave you kind of sick to the stomach 
but it's been going on far longer than people can imagine. Again, taught by the same gods for a specific purpose, like the human sacrifices to the gods that still goes on to this day. Now recently some have become familiar with the term spirit cooking. Whether it's real or not, I find the whole concept, even if it is fake, and it's suggested that it's not, absolutely disgusting. Spirit cooking indeed. These people and I use that term loosely, in league with others not human, are completely depraved and have pushed the boundaries of the dark elements to a whole new level. They have to be dealt with not in a manner whereby we stoop to their levels of depravity, where some come up with the same level of thinking to destroy or incapacitate them, but in a more manner, more fitting of being in the balance. All actions and crimes, like magic, comes with a consequence or a price. Our role is to stop them doing it and dealing with it on a soul level way. Not in a mind level way which invokes angry revenge and deepening levels of violence, but in a way where we safely ensure that they have crossed and passed over into another existence that then begins their own judgments, their own karma and ultimately their own healing. That way we never end up stooping to their levels of cycles of abuse. That is, or should be, the ultimate human way. It's called being humane. And welcome back. Um, very sobering and heavy piece, that. But it has to be said. We can't uh, allow them to hide in the shadows anymore. No matter how painful it is, it has to be brought into the light. Um, you've heard me uh, criticising the need for the wall. Um, under normal circumstances, that is correct. But then you hear the full story. And then it gets confirmed of... Um, by what? actually going on live in those regions. We just can't uh, allow these psychopaths to continue running amok through our communities and destroying the lives of the innocent. We have a collective responsibility, not just the... Um, alternative media but everyone personally I would sooner Mr Trump announce what I've just put out so the world gets to know the world's getting to know in private I can uh, guarantee that's ongoing. So everyone pretty much knows why the wall is being built and why it's important. I'm pleased to see that Mr Trump, whether it was a coincidence or not, um, announced this week that we very likely withdraw all of troops from abroad and station them along the wall or where the wall is going. 
where I've added some um, input in the past week. I think we should have um, sonar devices for the night crawlers that go underneath, although I've been guaranteed that the wall will go deep enough to prevent any tunnels. Maybe a few um, zappers might not go and miss. People have no idea the depths of the um, that people have gone to for various means, uh, money creating industries out of um, heinous acts prolonging life at the cost of others and over the next um, decade or less the whole lot will be eradicated we will not be going forward with these um, poor excuses for humanity and tolerating them any longer the off world we can we um, we can only set our own models and we've got enough immoral people to deal with without um lecturing off world of uh, how to be I'm hoping the council is um, dealing with those types there has to be a better way not only for this planet but for all the others where everyone can operate together without the need of excessive levels of violence, excessive levels of depravity. Claiming uh, one group is more important than the other based on whatever levels that they create, even in our own. Basically, we've created the insect realm it's only the insects that have kings and queens. Is that all we are? So the wall will will be built quicker than people think and stop this um, heinous crimes that are being commit, uh, committed. Like I said, there's a lot of investigation going on. Um so many levels now it's frightening as each level reveals another one opens up it's all like an onion it's all unraveling eventually we'll get to the seed and replant a better way Right, we've got a couple of other op-ed pieces. Um, I'll do the more lighter ones first. Because there is another one. We often hear of people crying about um, where's my free will in matters? How can the council or Kim or the government or somebody else speak for me? Uh, that's a fair question, but my question uh, back is, did you vote or did you proffer up anything in the way of solutions to exercise your own free will? You know, one of the comments I had recently is, I don't need Kim or the council or Manor World Holding Trust to declare me sovereign. Well, actually you do. whether you like that fact or not 
And uh, so did you cast your vote on how life should be? Did you cast your vote on how you'd like your life to go? Or to those people, did you just sit back and wait for others to do it and then complain of where's my free will? Well, the problem is you had free will all along, but you've forgotten to exercise it. And this is kind of a common theme, a bit like how people can create bad luck by frequent mentions of, I'm unlucky me, or nothing good ever happens to me, you'll hear some people say. Exactly, because that is what you are reaffirming. Or the worst ones, and we've all, everyone that listens will have heard at least one person say this. I think I'm going to get cancer or some other um, mortal disease. And how often do those people end up getting it? Why? Because they asked for it. Most people go, that's not believable. Actually, it is. You've exercised your free will. You said you think you're going to get cancer, and you end up getting it. Remember the other week where I said we all get certain visions put into our head, and some of them are car crashes, or some of them are an illness, or, or it's always something nasty. The minute you see them, you have to cast your vote and say, it's not happening. Not to me, it ain't. This is the problem with the frequencies where they can send or create images. That's why we banned channeling, same thing. So you need to exercise your free will. So if people, if it's now safe to say that you've witnessed people creating their own luck or lack of, or creating a poorer life because nothing good ever happens to those people, or creating an illness that's going to lead to an early death, how is it people don't believe they can create good luck and heal themselves? Why is that? It's because people have got themselves into a rut of victim status. A box, in essence, that can be filled up by others. That can create that status. People pissing you off, people letting you down, people doing bad things. Although that box can be filled up by others. But in essence, the box is created by the individual themselves. And once you create that box, others will use it to fill it up. And this is sometimes where people struggle. Where they go, do you think I enjoy this life? Is the retort often heard. And yet when you break it down as to how easily people can do things to themselves, it all dawns on them. Then the question arises, well, how can I fix it? Well, if you are able to create the problem, isn't it you that can uncreate it as well? by exercising the right use of your own free will. Now, the problem most don't see with free will is that it has no boundaries. It flows one way or it flows the other. But free will in itself 
with no boundaries, no defined boundaries anyway, can and has led to problems if people are not aware of its powers. It has been said, although not confirmed, but it has been said that this universe was created with all light. There was no dark. It didn't perceive dark. And yet when dark entered it, it was so long before they recognised it that the fractal virus had already taken over. So the issue is um, you can't have all light if you're exercising free will and I want all love and all light because if you can't perceive the dark it will capture you before you even know it and the same applies the other way that's why in a boundary free will you will have a balance of light and dark if you're playing a a light role you have to be able to see the dark and go that's my lesson I'm not going to be like them but without them being there you have an empty canvas to run wild the city of light in the 100 series was all love and light didn't work too well did they I'll cover that later but to give you an example of free will let's say there's a galactic council hovering above earth after requests by a few humans to review the site sad state of affairs on this planet and see whether correctional measures can be taken so the said council observes from a non-biased point of view and see much of the inhabitants or no dissension of poor conditions and or poor life except a relatively small number of people complaining their free will is being impinged on and life is nasty and life is unfair. But if you're the council acting in neutral observance, would you intervene in those circumstances? The answer is why would they when the majority think they have used their own free will and they are contented with their lives. So as you can see, free will can work for and against you. Or perhaps it needs people to be more aware of it. And maybe best with some boundaries. It's your choice to decide. Manifest abilities have increased over the last 18 to 24 months. Use it. It doesn't mean to say everyone's going to win the lottery, which is the most common first thing. And it doesn't mean to say it's not like a genie bottle either. Where if something doesn't work immediately, it doesn't work at all. It's like healing. People uh, are now aware that the people who can heal themselves and heal others. But does it just magic? Cl- uh, click of the fingers? No, it takes work. It takes time for the illness to manifest. It also takes time for the illness to disappear. 
And too often in society now we want instant gratification. So if you try your free will and your magic, white magic, don't expect it to work in an instant. You have to work at it. Same as everything else. I was watching a video this week, a uh, rather interesting gentleman whose name escapes me, um, but it was posted on the Facebook page and um, he made uh, a good video about word magic. And uh, he mentioned one word um, that he didn't go too deeply in, and so I decided uh, to enhance that particular word and what it means and he was talking about um, Al and El are all derivatives of God their God not ours and he came up with the um, the word leprechaun and if you break that word down lepre means scale or scaly Corn in um, Islamic terms is said as Khan, K H A N. In Hebrew, it's called Kohen, C O H E N, very common name. Why is it common? Because it means priest. So what do we have at the top of the justice system? We've all seen the pictures. A set of scales. The justice scales. Which are a representation of, in origin, out of Egypt. And their heart weighing malarkey they did back then. Of course it's also represented by a female who wears the serpent brooch over her forehead. Scales. And what do the people who administer their version of justice, that we all have to currently observe uh, and live by, which I don't think will last for too much longer, they all wear robes, just like the priests. Now you understand what a court system is about. Scaly priests. Perhaps we should look more carefully at the ancient myths and mythologies, as it seems, one, it's more real than, than imagined, and two, most of those beings that are being eulogised were not as nice as made out to be be it leprechauns, elves, fairies and fae. They weren't all nice. So that's the word magic for this week. Um, where are we next? Masks of Illusion. Uh, for those of you who have listened to the show all the way through, it, it reveals the truth. But is that truth comfortable or not for the host or those for those around them? So what is the mask of illusion that I first brought up back in, what's well, about 18 months ago now, two years maybe? With warnings, it would eventually lead to something resembling all-out chaos. Now, all people wear masks of some sort to cover up shortfalls they don't like others to see. Their own perceived weaknesses. Ob observers will see it regardless of the mask. And that's what people don't get. <laughs> if you're a true observer, you will still see beyond the mask. And that is the key to psychology in many ways. But over the last five to ten years, 
many more people have demanded the truth about themselves, this world, and how it all operates. And the biggest question is how deep, wide, and long have the lies gone? Well, that depends on how many, how far, and how many rabbit holes you have gone down. Now, we've been down more rabbit holes than most with our show, as I'm able to cover many topics all in the one show. But I did warn that the masks would start to come down and we would see a lot more being exposed on all levels. But I also warned that you would see it within yourself and also those around you. Like I said, masks are not just coming down for the cabal, but all of us. Now, some will ask, why? I I haven't done this or I haven't done that. And the reason being is, how can you demand truth of others and not be truthful within yourself? That's not how it works. Selective truth is what they have done and used on us. For aeons. And the time for revealing the full truth is now upon us and heavily underway. Do you think it's a coincidence that cabal, bankers, government, scam artists, agents, trolls, and even co-opted or corrupt people in the alternative media are now all being exposed? Nope, it isn't. The reason being is sufficient demand of it. We want the truth. Of course, truth comes at a price, a heavy price, uh, given that piece um, 20, 30 minutes ago. It's painful. And the reality is too few can really handle all of the truth. It has to be parceled up, which is what we've tried to do with this show. Stair-stepped into it. Now, many can handle certain portions of the truth until it impacts them or their own bubble world around them. And then what happens is all hell breaks loose and they struggle to absorb and process it, which is the key to all information. How you absorb it, how you deal with it and how you process it and what is your reaction going forward. Uh, but many ignore certain aspects as it's too painful, too traumatic, or too triggering. An example of this was the reaction to the Illuminati One show with the Sfarley material. Many in the group freaked out, and that led me to delay part two. Now, this is not something to be ashamed of or feel in any way that you're weak, that you can't do this and you can't do that. What you exhibited was actually a natural reaction to what, quite frankly, was heinous behaviour. But often people use their masks and go, oh, I was fine with it. The reality is no one was fine with it. So people wall it all off and then this leads to a backup and a subsequent overload of it which then often leads to projection outbursts as a way to cope with it which is not fair on whoever becomes the projection screen <laughs> of which I've um, had more than a, a few <laughs> but these masks of illusion that you're seeing coming down in all levels of society now um, is in essence what humanity signed up for many thousands of years ago and was alluded to also in the series The 100 The City of Light Pill all love and light, no pain, no trauma, where the people who took the pill ambled around in a false state of apparent bliss, 
just mind-numbing of the senses, with an illusion of all is well as chaos ensues around them. Sound familiar? Yes, the unawakened. They still have the city of light pill. So to correct things, we have to go back to the beginning of the problem and retrace steps. And humans at that time chose to erase all the memories. The trees kept theirs. So we've had repeated life recycles of forgetfulness, of stumbling in the dark with a few fragments of memories returning here and there. And working it all out is one giant puzzle. And the problem is too many want others to work things out for them. You can't do the work for somebody else. You can assist them. You can't make them stand in their own truth and their own sovereignty. There's that free will again. You can't do somebody else's shadow work. You can't deal, do with somebody else's inner work. You can show them a path of how to do it and how you went about it. But you can't make them do it. Only you can. So getting others to work things out for you has never worked out too well in the past and will definitely not work out too well for the individual now or the future. The key is you demanded the truth. There's your free will again. But I say be careful what you ask for as truth always comes with a heavy price. Are you willing to pay it at this time? I think most who listen to this show are. Yes, there's some aspects that people will struggle with, like the piece earlier. But we can't keep ignoring it. Because it's... That's too much. I can't deal with that. Um... I'm not sure the children who are on the suffering and um, can deal with that either. Two more pieces before we have another music break. Um, memory wipes, synths and walk-ins is this piece. And um, Many have now noticed um, lapses in people's memory that's kind of increased more so in the last few months as it became more and more frequent and subsequently more obvious, even some within our own group. Unable, it appears, to remember basic information given in recent shows and beyond but if it's just isolated to one group of people, it's easier to pinpoint. But clearly it's not the case. And what has become clear is this is becoming a common theme. And has a few options of possibilities. First one in reference to our group is maybe those people don't listen to the show. Or could it be some people in the group are more than one person using one profile? Time will tell on that. But away from the group, people are noticing this phenomena at an increasing pace. And there are really only two options. One, they are being completely memory wiped of certain information garnered. Or two, they operate in a different timeline and it supports the two worlds narrative I put forward well over a year ago. Are 
option one, which is the memory wipe, was a Kerr Jordan dream time. And would suggest some form of transmitter between the memory wipe machine and the host. Kind of a scary thought, but in case people think this is all science fiction and future tech, it's not. Think MK Ultra and the paperclip crew. Think Russian KGB back in the late 1940s. It's been going on a long time. And option two of a different timeline and a two worlds theory seems to make a lot more sense these days than when I first put it out. It explains all of the Mandela effects easier, explains why so many remember so-and-so dying only to be told they died this week or that month. Now the reality is we all operate in two or more worlds. It's just that most can't remember or distinguish the different worlds. Some of you may have met yourself in dream time. And think it's all just your imagination. No, it's not. If it is just your imagination, why is that version of you that you meet always slightly different? Be it younger or older, taller or smaller, thinner or fatter, and a different dress code. Because that person is not in this world. That's another version of you in another world, an overlay. Because if it was just you, you would see the same version. Now, a key thing to remember... Many of you are having dream experiences and some of you are describing bizarre things and bizarre creatures and, and all kinds of different strange scenarios. But the key thing to remember in dream time is you cannot imagine something that doesn't exist. It's not possible. The idea that imagination creates fantasy is another one of the system's mode of control. Oh, it's just fantasy. Uh, like bollocks it is. And that's so you don't think that that aspect of life is real. And it's a bit like the, the children talking to people when they're young and adults pass it off as an imaginary friend because adults are brainwashed into thinking that's not normal there's that normal reference again but you remember normal is a limiting program where they decide what is normal and what's not. There's no such thing as normal. My own son was chatting and laughing in his bed before he could talk. And his mum went in one night and he pointed to um, the cupboard and says, Anna Doon was in the cupboard. which kind of freaked uh, the ex out, freaked most people out. So I took the step to record his sleep time. And lo and behold, a female voice spoke to him and he then replied to her.
I can sense uh, the the uh, cold chill running up people's spines now. <laughs> Hair standing up on the neck again. Oh my God, that happened to me. So clearly this phenomena is real. It's not imagination. There's so much we can't see. That's the problem. There's so much we can't hear either because of further limitation programs on the humans. But then I got, when going through this, as I often do, I end up, I got thinking on a deeper level. And here's where the pondering comes in. Um, and where and how memory loss or the appearance of being two people in one vessel or one Facebook profile and then it hit me. What we are potentially dealing with here is a load of walk-ins. Think about that for a minute. Where the vessel is inhabited by another being and temporary or permanent control of the vessel is then garnered. So the original person has suddenly got no or poor memory. Kind of explains it, doesn't it? Well, that's all old wives' tales and all this possession and all that's on us. Yep. It's not. And possession is gained by trauma, which then opens up the PSI field. We covered this in the um, Humanity Unplugged 1 and 2 series we did. And you can also ruin your own PSI field via excess alcohol or psychedelic drugs of all varieties and or seances. Channeling. You open the channel and you invite another entity in. Not a particularly bright uh, thing to do. And what happens is this then takes you into the spirit realm. And as most of humanity is kind of stuck in a lower astral cord connections. This then brings in the demonics, trauma based peoples, extinct beings, and also illness. Believe it or not. What if the walk in is the one with cancer and it infects the vessel? So why are so many stuck in the astral? Because insufficient people have done nothing to develop themselves and their own understanding. It's a personal choice. And yes, we can blame this group and we can blame that group. But ultimately, through your own inner strength and will, you can chart your own course. like the piece I did earlier, exercising your own free will. So, this now begs the question, and this is the piece that you need to ponder on, is with an increase in the last two decades of the condition known as bipolar. Is bipolar actually vessel possession, aka walking in some way? Now this line of thinking opens up the possibilities of such. And yes, it will create fear in a way. But it pro if it proves to be true, then you've just gone directly to the source of the problem and ultimately then how to work on out 
the solution which doesn't involve mind-altering pharmaceutical drugs. you got bipolar, take this. You know, whatever condition. No. Fears can always be overcome. But if the source of the fear is recognised by and within the individual and part of the issues for example with alcoholics is to get them to recognise they have a problem to begin with that's the first step to recovery recognise you have a problem so it's then possible that people diagnosed with bipolar may well be looking at a walking scenario why is it only increased in the last two decades more so in the last decade is it a coincidence it's at the same time when it was crucial to our survival as a species on this planet and is it not beyond the dark the Draco, the parents and the covens to pull this sort of stunt off. Bring walk-ins to attack from within. You see, their whole existence relies on us not waking up and not standing in our own sovereignty. This type of possession, known as a walk-in now, has gone on for thousands of years. And the system tells you that these people are just nutty. Like schizophrenia. People who hear voices in their heads, they say. What if there's actually nothing wrong with those people, per se? other than they open the back door, so to speak, and a walk-in or multiple walk-ins stepped into the vessel and occupied your space. Perhaps this version then explains things in a lot better way, in a more rational way, than just saying, well, those people are just nuts. The timing of bipolar when we were near in the end game is what made me think this needs to be pondered on. It's not something to be uh, fearful of. You can remove the infection. Recognising you may have that issue is the first step you then which all ties into the previous piece you exercise your own free will get out of my vessel stay away from excessive alcohol like I said they call it spirits for a reason. You're bring, bringing them in. The last piece, a bit more later. Um, it's kind of interesting this with the Fulford. Uh, Benjamin Fulford has mentioned that Neil Keenan is apparently now dead and re replaced by a clone or a double. <laughs> uh, perhaps if he listened to this show, he may have learned about that sooner. But this is now the fourth time I've heard it from different people. If you look at uh, a recent version of Keenan, he looks a lot older and fatter. 
than his previous videos. Who knows? But it was funny how suddenly, all of a sudden, Keenan's videos became so rather infrequent. And so did his articles following his exposure by myself almost two years ago now. Personally speaking, uh, I'm not bothered whether Captain Irrelevant is live or dead. To me, he's no longer a player in the game. But the reality is, once an agency asset is outed and subsequently compromised, they very rarely survive much longer after that. They won't allow it. And in my opinion, Neil Keenan's role was taken over by Robert David Steele. Same department. And now perhaps people will start to see what I've been warning for a long time of elements within the community. Keenan, Drake, and Avon Wrights, Fulford, Tanath, Wilcock and Corey. Wilcock, Mark II, I might add. We're all the same team pulling for the wrong agendas. And perhaps people will then back off saying I'm causing infighting within the community by exposing them. It was not infighting. As they were not in our community, but theirs. All of them. They're all interlinked. As for Drake, he was given a heads up on Keenan by many during my time on, on his show, including me. I warned them about Keenan, that I felt he was BS, as far back as October 2013. But Drake chose to ignore it, saying he had vetted them. But one wonders where that leaves Drake now, that it's become a more highlighted. Maybe he's dead, maybe he isn't. If he is, will he still support someone who has ripped a, an awful lot of people off, including Drake? Or do the honourable thing for once and call it as it is? The reality is, uh, what few people know, is Keenan had dropped Drake long before he did. He just used him. I was speaking to Keenan to garner more information throughout 2014 and early 2015, where Keenan was telling me to ditch Drake. What are you doing with him? He's a waste of space. Quote, unquote. And that's why, when Keenan's last appearance on Cosmic Voice, which was in the September of 15, I think, I stayed quiet on the bulk of that show. Because to me, it was all too false and far too hypocritical for my liking. Perhaps we'll play this next song for Neil. Shame he was old and not good and not good though, if you ask me. Right, welcome back to the final portion of tonight's show. I'm gonna run through a few questions here and there and um we're gonna wrap up uh, this show tonight. Um isn't the cash outs to eliminate poverty how communism is brought back in and thus the goal for the new world order? No, <clears throat> no, it's not. You can, we've been brainwashed with all these isms that one, one is better than the other. You can call it whatever you wish to call it. It's how it's implemented that counts. You know, some people say America is a democracy. Are you seeing evidence of what it means to be democratic? Is democratic supposed to be 
let's all act like Nazis and fascism. Communism is about, look at the word, it's about sharing. The problem was, is how it was shared. So if you implement a certain system, let's call it communalism, where everyone gets the fair share, where everyone is supplied with the basic needs of life. That should be a prerequisite for everyone. Look at the people in Venezuela, only allowed to have $2.75 a month, and it's $7 to buy one chicken. You can call that whatever you like. Socialism, capitalism, blah, blah, blah. To me, it's bollockism. Because it's not looking after the people. And we have to move away from what we perceive as certain isms or certain political systems. And go by the actions of what takes place. There are certain elements in this country who are trying to implement the USSR communism. But didn't Putin give away vast tracts of land for free to people? Haven't we done stories about China eliminating 40 to 60 percent of, of their people out of the poverty zone? But that's also all very, very bad, the communism, isn't it? We've heard about Gaddafi giving his people $50,000 for their first child, $25,000 towards the first home, $25,000 for people who get married. What system do you call that? Of course, he's classed as a dictator and evil and this and that. I'm not saying he was all good, but he also created a water farm fresh water for the people and what did the rogue American military do blow it up because they don't want that continent to be brought up to our standards they want them in the dirt so you can have and call whatever system you like going forward and we need to drop the isms because none of them have been applied too well. Communism, if you read, actually read it, which most people haven't, is actually the best system, provided it's implemented in the right way. But it's not. So we need to get away from the labels and focus more on what the actions are and how it unfolds. If memory serves me correctly, it was calculated that there are around 496 aspects of life to be dealt with as part of a great cleanup. Is there a list available to see, as I imagine it would be beneficial to all going forward? Um, no, there isn't a list as it stands. Um, maybe one could be made available, but I think most people can get the gist of the different aspects and there may be aspects within that list that are um, needed not to be seen. What of it? Um, no, I won't speculate. But yeah, I'm sure most people can think of certain things, if contained, that were out it of changing aspects in life. It then gives a heads up to certain ones to counteract it. But I will ask. If America is, was, the new Atlantis, as Fran Francis Bacon called it, would it be fair to call modern Russia under Putin the new Lemuria? No and no. Um, some uh, um, say Atlantis was a craft. Others say it was dotted around the world. It was more uh, a system of people. and Atlantis. I don't know, uh, I can't nail down 
100% what is correct. There is evidence there was Atlantis in the Southern Ocean, the very far south, which is now under ice. Maybe when that ice melts, and now it won't cause catastrophic flooding, as some people um, mention, because it will balance out by creating ice in other regions, which is exactly what's happening. The North Pole is um, ice is receding, but it's going further south and further east towards Russia and Siberia. They've got more ice now than ever. Um, Lemuria was in, um, you can see the outline. If you've got Google Earth and zoom into the ocean, you can see the outline of it. Includes all the islands of Papua New Guinea and Indonesia, and you can see it spin round and includes Hawaii. Russia, do you have any more information about the fantastic energy over there in some parts of the country? Um, only that it's nearer to the zones where the source energy is more frequent. Um, in an earlier show, you mentioned New Earth. How does someone know if he or she is pure enough to go there? Um, that's an answer for you, the individual. It's not for somebody else to answer for. The reality as it stands is most people are not. They're not of the right vibration. And part of the efforts on, uh, that's ongoing is to increase that vibration and remove the blocks that's been preventing it like the cords to the lower astral. So that's a lot of the work that's uh, going on in uh, general secrecy, but at times we can release it into this show. You mentioned earlier that the bars are being drilled around the poles. Now the poles are going to be drilled in various um nexus points around the planet and uh, it will reposition the earth axis as you said and you also said this would result in a Mediterranean climate any idea how long this might take no it is uh, being worked on that's all I can say at this point since February, I've been feeling energised. Good for you. Uh, meaning, I almost feel like I can leap out of my body whenever I want to, but don't know how. Is this just possibly day-to-day -day reactions to the positive energy coming in, or something more? Um, it can be something more, but it's mainly the first part of the energies, because you've managed to clear some of your um, malfrequent energies so then you are able it's like it's like an, uh, a cup if you uh, if your cup's full of coffee and you suddenly decide you want a tea you've got to drink the coffee or tip it out to, to use the same cup and, the, and your body's the same well if your um stuffed up with uh, energy that contains trauma or guilt or shame or discord then how are you going to fill up your cup with better energies and frequencies it's all blocked up and this is what, why we've stressed the importance of doing your own shadow work. Like I said, no one can do it for you. Be it me, be it uh, 
churches, Jesus coming down and saving you, you name it. Only you can deal with your own shadow work. Now part of the problem is we had help dealing with the shadow work thousands of years ago and we ended up in the city of light. It wasn't good. Like I said, for those of you um, unfamiliar with that term, go and watch the series The 100s. It's like um, almost a biographical account of humanity. They came down from the ark and were seeded onto the planet with the different tribes. Some of them you'll recognize and some you won't. So keep um, hold on to the, that feeling and that energy. You're doing well. My understanding is that in the new sovereign structure of the world, all countries are now sovereign. No, they're not. Only two countries are now sovereign currently, which is America and the Isle of Manus, better known as the Kingdom of Mana, which is an island off the um, northeast coast of Papua New Guinea. Uh, and they've been given back all in ground assets and property. Um, they will do. And all debts have been discharged. No, they haven't. Not yet. And they will receive three times their GDP to restart. Yes, that is when everything is cleared so that uh, covers that aspect um, proper systems of government will be restored such as the Republic of America with real authority over the country no the term authority think about how you're using that a republic a real Republic of America is a government not being an authority but running for and by the people big difference remove the term authority that's the old way the top leader in each country will be the existing recognised leader of that country example Donald Trump for America Macron for France I wouldn't count on it Merkel for Germany, I certainly wouldn't count on that. And May for England, I wouldn't count on that either. On the service, this appears that we're handing all the wealth of the trust back over to the people who were previously controlled by the cabal. Not on my service, it's not. But, fair comment. But no, that's not the way it's going to happen. This is why we've said we have spoken to all 209 countries and told them the conditions of sovereignty which is to clean house we're going through all aspects of life cleaning house this is why you're seeing so many crimes and so many presidents there's been three presidents in the last month who have been arrested and yet people say nothing's changing in the public arena when have you ever seen three presidents in one month arrested? What can you tell us about the safeguards that are being put in place to ensure that the people do the right thing? That's up to the people. I've said it before. There's no guarantee that we, the people, are going to do something different or better. And that's why I stress the importance of changing the mindset, like the question a few back, talking about communism. That's old God. It's not the new God. We have to step out and create new ways of doing things. Otherwise, if we just carry on with the same terms, and the same energy of those terms, we're going to repeat and fail the same way the human cabal have 
trying to replicate, pardon the pun, the reptile system. They thought they could carry on in the same way. No. Failed. Spectacularly. And unless we start as a collective thinking and acting different, we will repeat the same mistakes. This is why I talk about businesses that may be funded in uh, by the foundation or some other organisation. It might be the People's Club, it might be Create Change, or a vast number of other. It might be Procter & Gamble and the Thrive people. It might be Jared Rand. Well, heaven forbid. Um, how are they going to be... Uh, are they going to guarantee that it's going to go to the right people? Are the people not going to abuse it and just collect money for nothing and spend it and waste it on crap? Or are they going to run the business in a way where people actually get paid proper wages and they don't have CEOs on exorbitant amounts? What if everyone earned 50,000? Some people go, that's a bit low. Well, there's two people who work, so there's 100,000. If you can't live on $100,000 a year, there's something not right in your life. You're wasting it on showing off. Fancy cars, bigger houses that you can't really afford to keep up with the Joneses. No, we have to stop that. There's people living on less than $30 a month. And yet some people are telling me $100,000 for the family is not, not enough. Really? Not enough thinking is my answer. Does the new financial system, AI, have a key role in ensuring proper use of the funds? Yes. It stops it being stolen. It can track all transactions. It can then produce it. Uh, alarm systems to prevent um, the laundering that has gone on through uh, much of our lives. It can do many things. And uh, providing it's programmed in the right way, it is beneficial. Its reach is minimal as it stands, and I would like to stay it to stay minimal. I don't personally trust AI because you're always relying on who programs it. Currently, it's being programmed the right way. And currently, um, despite the thousands of attempts, they're unable to hack it. I hope that continues on both counts, that it's operated by the right people, uh, with the right vibration, the right frequency, the people who operate from heart, not through head. And sadly, those those people are few that have all those three abilities. And the key going forward is we have most people operating with those abilities in a higher vibration, a higher frequency, thinking and acting in a better way for the all and not for the self or the few. That's what happens when you operate, really operate, from the heart. So I hope that answers your questions. What you posted about the practicing of Satanism within the Vatican yesterday, can you tell me that, that creepy monument is also a portal we used to bring in those evil entities to our world? Um, that's below. 
Vatican goes down 10 floors and there's um, the most darkest evil as you go further down you may find that um, that organisation come very heavily into the spotlight over the next coming months that's why I posted it a refresher it's there for everyone who, who can see with an open mind why would the Vatican have all kinds of gremlins and dark uh, cherubs and all that malarkey and a, such, a statue that's roughly about 40 foot high and about 80, 90 foot wide filled with dead traumatised souls with a god like being that's half man half reptilian is that all about um, is that what religion's all about where's the morals in that I keep telling you about how sinful you all are and there's none more sim sinful on this planet than them. It's not going to be a pleasant ride for um, practicing Catholics going forward. And it's not going to be a pleasant ride for practicing Protestants either. Because in essence you're all Catholics. I hate to uh, tell you that. But Protestantism is not a religion it was a protestant movement that was created into a religion for divide and conquer go and check your history and it's nothing to do with Henry VIII and all that bollocks that they come out with kings and queens do what the bloody hell they like and have done for thousands of years you don't think uh, they're going to bow down to a bloody church do you So if you're a practicing Catholic, you may want to start checking it out. It's all there. The build, there's not only that statue, you look at them all the way around. The pineal gland, the key, the shape of St. Peter's, the key. And then the, the roof in the shape of the serpent. And then you've got the serpent staff that the Pope carries round. And then you've got the fish Dogon hat that they wear. It's nothing to do with us. Uh, well, we've gone way over time again. Uh, what sense need a vacation? Uh, Vacant vacation. Vacation. <laughs> What sense need vac vaccinations, do you think? Well, maybe it's vaccinations are not um, what we think. Maybe the uh, chipping programs. Maybe. Uh, I know I need a vacation. <laughs> um, where are we next? Um... See if I can find one that's quick. Uh, shadow work, I think we've covered multiple times and uh, multiple shows. And there's Chloe's documents all over THI, Facebook, Me We Think Different. Um, they're all there. Uh, are are emotions being still being harvested? Yes, every second that you choose to give it away. Is it safe to praise our creator? You praise within, not out. The creator is within you, not outside of you. You are part of the creator you create. you just forgotten. Is the Vatican a coven? Yes, uh, in its own right, with its own parent. Um, not necessarily. Um, 
that is. Yes and no. Um, it's probably too long to explain that. Uh, but how does this fit in with Mr. M, D, P and C, hierarch hierarchy of control? Well, um, D was the Draco, and they were the top priests, or perceived anyway. There was the Aldazani, Stroke of Braxis, uh, humanoid types that were above the Draco. I haven't been too kind, but Draco is the one more familiar. And then you have um, Humanity um, 1.0. We were two. Um, that were a lot taller than us and a lot bigger. And, and um, human-like, shall we say. And they were known as the parents. And 13 of them were the head of the covens. And then there was eight special different parents, which made up 21. Now, we did a lot of work um, on Chain the Runa, in particular did a lot of work about removing the parents, and subsequently the covens went with them. Now, the covens can have maybe, um, there may only be a dozen in one coven, there may be 12,000 in another coven. Depends on which ones owns which. So there's no defined number within a coven. So the 13 parents ran 13 covens. Well, as those parents started diminishing, so did the covens went with them. And then the key was to get those people out of those covens to step away from it and there's been a number of people but Shane the Runa is one of the more prominent ones that um, worked with the parents and the covens to step down realised they'd been abused and lied to also because they were even the top ones the Draco were lied to they were told they had no soul so they acted that way. All a big ripple effect. So that's where where it finally stood is there was two parents left out of the twenty one which may have left at the maximum of two covens. But the theory is now there's none left. We're trying to get validity on it, and we will. Maybe in the next show. With them gone, it changes everything. No more moving walls when you're about to step out of the maze, which is what they often did. Just as humanity was working things out, they moved the walls of the maze. This time, we moved their walls and trapped them in their own maze. And they're not going with us. Remember that. Right, that's the end of tonight's show. It's kind of ran over. There was a lot of things to cover, a lot to ponder on. Some good intel, uh, a lot of good insights, I think, <laughs> to keep you going for another week uh, or sooner. Uh, we're in that times. We're literally on a knife edge of the way things are going. Uh, work is still in um, rapid progress is what I will say and yes I know it's frustrating that more of it hasn't, or at least some aspect of it hasn't become more visible or more public but then if you look close enough you will see there's an awful lot going on that never used to happen previously three presidents being arrested or ex-presidents in one month 
that's change. So I hope you enjoyed the show. I know it was heavy in some parts. Absorb it and process it. And deal with it in the best way you can. Remember the, the issue of free will. Too many people are um, not exercising it either at all or in the right way. So a lot of these issues and the pondering pieces of the walk-ins can be dealt with by exercising your own free will in a better way. As for the piece on the wall, it's not easy to process that level of information. Uh, snuff movies kids use for this and chewed upon and organ harvesting and adrenochrome lucian it's not the everyday information it's tough including for this person you know but we cannot continue to be um, or choose to be ignorant of it once it's out so if you have any doubts of why the wall's being built there was your answer tonight it's not ideal but it was necessary for the life of all the children and the people who are being used in the most heinous ways by rogue elements who in my opinion their life longevity will reduce drastically we'll watch it all unfold and we will uh, expose it and continue to expose it until all these um, clowns and um, heinous acts are eradicated from this planet I'm going to end with a piece that was mentioned by an extra terrestrial biological entity and how they operate in their world. Something that we should really consider in ours. And it goes like this. Just try to accept we are in paradise when we are seeing and understanding something new. Our God, G-O-D, is change. Our religion is understanding. Searching for truth is our greatest social challenge and purpose. That's something that we need to roll out on this planet. No matter how painful or awful or sick to the stomach it makes you feel. Once it's processed, it then goes out into the ether and it's one less person that's been denied that knowledge. While people are denied the knowledge, it goes on unhindered. People will find out, and once vast volumes find out, it's them that are ended. This has been the Truth, Honour and Integrity show. My name's Thomas Williams. Bye for now.